Thank you. This, this is the geeky part. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show a video first, just so you'll get an idea of what this stuff was. Inventor McAvinney has made a computer screen that can sense the position of several fingers at once, taking the concept of a computer touch screen one step further. Prestigious Carnegie Institute in Pittsburgh, composer Reza Velli is the first to compose for the video harp, and Preview captured his debut concert performance. <laughs> McAvin is taking the invention a step further in creating the stage frame, a video harp that you can actually get into. Instead of blocking the light with your fingers, you block it with your body, a performance artist's dream. Stage frame can break down the distinction between the instrumentalist and the dancer and the choreographer uh, and, and the, uh, the composer. Uh, one person can do all of these things at the same time. Okay. Anyway, uh, that, that was the stage frame. It was, as he said, a, a, a video harp that was big enough to get inside. Uh, what I was trying to do <coughs> with all this stuff was uh, to capture human expression. and. Uh, we just uh, okay. Oh, um, the 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 point here is that uh, you know the useful useful information in the world resides in humans, not in computers. So we've we've got to move the information from us to the computer rather than the other way around. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with these slides by giving you a, a little history of computer human interfaces. They actually, uh, aside from the from the typewriter, which everybody knows about, they they go back to uh, World War II, where uh, a guy named uh, Ralph Benjamin invented a thing called a track ball, a track ball for the Royal Navy, and uh, I, the uh, the ball in this picture was about as big as a bowling ball. I think if you if you turned this thing over, it, you know it would almost be a mouse. <laughs> uh, notice it was built with tubes. Uh, speaking of which, when I started programming programming computers, some of them were still made with tubes, and I've actually walked around in, inside a running central processor unit, but, uh, <laughs> a Univac II, I think it was. Um, I'm going to uh, skip ahead to, to the mouse. Uh, I, uh, in, in the late 60s, I was working for a company called Sperry Gyroscope Company on Long Island that uh, built the, the inertial navigation system for the Polaris missile system and they uh, for some strange reason they sent me out to, uh, to uh, a place called Stanford Research Institute uh, to, to visit this guy uh, Doug Engelbart who had, who had invented the mouse. He actually invented it in 63 and uh, it, didn't, it didn't, didn't actually get into mass production until much later in 1984 uh, with, with the, uh, the Apple Macintosh. Doug, Doug was a neat guy. He also invented uh, multiple overlapping windows. You know, this was he had this running back in the in the late 60s, and uh, the, the the mouse, the first mouse here, had two two little wheels at right angles, and they put it on a piece of glass so that the wheel that wasn't moving could, could scrape along and it squeaked. So I think that's why they called it a mouse. Uh, I don't know. It had a tail too. Uh, <coughs> I just, uh, you know, since our, our MC is a high school teacher, I threw a slide in here uh, uh, about high school. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is, I, I only mention this because, because Xerox later developed the mouse. And when I was in high school in, in Rochester, New York, uh, myself and some other geeky kids built a seismograph station in the basement of the school. And Xerox gave us the, the prototype of, of their first uh, Xerox. That's me in the middle at 16 and, in 1959, I think. And... Uh, so they gave us that to use as a readout for this. So anyway, I just threw that in. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move ahead to uh, uh, the early 80s. I, uh, 
I wanted to, to f I, I was interested in computer music, so I, I wanted a way to, you know, conduct music, and I thought it would be nice if you could put an image of, the, of an orchestra on the screen and point to the violins and say, play louder. And I called up a touchscreen, there actually were touchscreen companies, you know, that sent single fingers back in the early 80s, <clears throat> and I called one up and asked, you know, can you, can you build me one that'll sense more than one finger? And they said, why, you know, why would anybody want that? So, so I took that as a, as a clue to, to, to do it. Uh, I, I was not the only inventor of touchscreens. Uh, the, the, the capacitive touchscreen you use on your phone was actually invented at Bell Labs. Uh, there was a guy named Myron Kruger in, in, at the University of Connecticut who did some neat things with, with light on, on light tables. Uh, what I was trying to do in the early 80s was build a frame that you could fit around your computer monitor and hopefully sense more than one finger. So you can see uh, that picture on the left is, is the first uh, sensor frame, as we called it. And uh, she was using multiple fingers. And this is something uh, that was, uh, I think it, this picture appeared on from NASA tech briefs or something like that. They, they gave me some money to build a, a 3D version of this. One, one of the reasons I wanted to use optical scanning was I figured maybe we could get some 3D stuff out of it, you know, get finger angles and things like that. Um, the, the breakthrough here was, uh, see, optical sensors then were, were very expensive. If you bought a video camera, uh, it might cost you $1,200, but the sensor inside was $800, you know. So uh, uh, I, had, I had read somewhere that somebody had discovered that computer memory chips, what are called, what engineers call DRAMs, dynamic random access memories, are actually sensitive to infrared light. And I thought, hey, if I could use these, they'd be a lot cheaper. So, so that's really what these things were. They, uh, they used these little chips and uh, it, it seemed like a neat idea and we actually even started up a company to produce these, these sensor frames. And just as we were getting into production, uh, the, the company that was making this called us up and said, oh, uh, guess what? We shut down the fab line two months ago and uh, we, we can't deliver your chips. <laughs> so we, we, had, we had some, some left we had we had about a hundred, and we figured, oh, oh, what the hell? Let's let's build a musical instrument. So, <laughs> you know, um, so so we built the video harp, which which you saw in the in the uh, picture there. It was intended to be a uh, an instrument that would let you. It would sense any class of gestures, like bowing, strumming, percussion, uh, keyboarding, whatever, and then let you plug any class of gesture into any class of instrument. So you could, you know, bow a horn or uh, uh, strum a, a, a something other than a than a stringed instrument. Uh, anyway, uh, around <clears throat> around 1985, d doing this multi-finger stuff, I I thought we needed a way to describe gestures. So I developed a gesture notation, uh, and I, you, I don't know if you can see this from back there, but uh, th this was about I think it was uh, oh May or, May or so of of 85, and you can see an example on on the right of a pinch to zoom gesture. A lot of people think this came along, you know, back in 2007 or something like that, but uh, we, we were actually talking about it at Carnegie Mellon in, uh, in, in the mid 80s. And uh, some people, other people later claimed they invented this. Like a guy visited us who had just been fired from Apple. Uh, and he, <laughs> and he uh, as, as you can see his note there, we. We, we guessed that, that you use DRAMs. So, uh, so anyway, whatever, whatever Apple is telling you about pinch to zoom, I, I think they, they got there a little late. But, uh, <laughs> so, oh yeah, here's a picture of the video harp. Um, circa 1989. We, we produced about eight of these. Uh, the, 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 the whole problem with inventing a new musical instrument is, you know, there are no endowed chairs and orchestras for video harps. Uh, so, uh, we, it was priced too high and, and basically at that point I, I just decided, well, you know, we, we can't really make a, a living on this, I better put it out of business. And so, the, the company closed down around 91 or so. And uh, anyway, that's the, so that's the, that's the, the past of this stuff. Now, uh, optical gesture sensing is not dead. You know, uh, current technologies. If you've seen the Microsoft Surface, it's a table, and it, several people can stand around it. It can sense any number of fingers. 
I don't think there's really a limit, but it's two-dimensional. And then there's a, you know, there's a Microsoft Connect that senses, you know, body motion, rough hand gestures, things like that. Uh, that's a neat idea. The whole problem with optical sensing uh, is that if you do something that hides your fingers, it's hard to track your fingertips. And around 92, uh, about the time my wife and I moved into to this area, I was starting to think, you know, maybe optical gesture sensing isn't the way to go. You really need to be able to, to feel what you're doing. So, for example, you screw a nut onto a bolt. Uh, you, you need a lot more than just a mouse. You, you know, you, the position of the bolt requires six degrees of freedom. In other words, be able to move it along X, Y, or Z axis and then rotate about the... Uh, if you screw a nut onto a bolt, you need more. Uh, but we haven't even talked about grasping something. And when you're using uh, a computer-aided design system, something like that, you, uh, you, you, you want to make use of all these, these freedoms that you have. Because if you don't, you try to squeeze it into a 2D device like a mouse, it, it takes forever. So imagine trying to use a mouse to, to screw a nut onto a bolt. You know, uh, every system would probably do it differently. You know, uh, and, and you wind up with a sort of a tower of Babel. Well, right now we're, we're seeing some really interesting technology com coming along, like, you know, the Google Glasses, uh, the Oculus Rift, which is a gamer's machine that can track your motion in real time. Neat stuff. Uh, Sony's doing a thing called Pro Project Morpheus, which is similar to that. There's a company in my hometown of Rochester, you know, Musics, that's, that's making uh, these things. Th this stuff is, is changing very quickly. What I would like to see is, uh, first of all, in, in terms of s your sensing, uh, have something that can go smoothly between uh, a, a totally immersed environment on the one hand and an environment where you have just a head-up display, stuff, information displayed to you about your surroundings. And you should be able to go smoothly between these, these things. And that, that technology is just beginning to to appear. Um, we need to, to capture all the motion of the human body, not, not leave any out, and we need to be able to feel what we're doing. So uh, I think what's going to happen as a result of this is we're, we're going to see things that I call extensors or exoskeleton, essentially, that you wear that, that will sense your motions. And uh, th they'll probably come in a, in a couple of different flavors. You know, no, the, the big problem with these things is that uh, <laughs> if they're connected to, to the net, they, they can be hacked. And so you don't want somebody grabbing your arms and strangling you. <laughs> uh, so I, I, can, I can see why you might want an autonomous one with a switch that you can just switch, if you can, if you can get to the switch. You know, <laughs> that's, that's a problem. Uh, anyway, oh, what, what are the applications? Uh, Computer-aided design, games, teleoperation, manipulating remote things, uh, bioengineering, man manipulating uh, molecules, uh, tr transport. You know, you can add legs to this thing, have an exoskeleton, and, and you know, walk to work with a uh, uh, little less effort. Uh, needless to say, exercise machines. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a scaled up exoskeleton. Uh, I think the guy is a little thing in the, in the middle there. Uh, I, I would be a little afraid to have one around the house. Yeah. Yeah. You, you probably, uh, oh, my time's up. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, I, all I want to say about these things is I think they'll make us a lot more productive and more fun. They are, they are a bit dangerous. And uh, I, I just wanted to say one, one thing, too, about geeks. Um, you know, scientists tell us where the universe came from. Uh, engineers are going to determine where it goes. So let's do it. <laughs>